Let's now talk about sequences. So when we talk about sequence, a sequence or sequences, we are basically talking about succession of events or objects in a specified order. When you say succession, naturally, there will be a specific order. In Tagalog, ang ibig sabihin ng order ay pagkasunod-sunod. Okay? In mathematics, when we talk about sequence, this is composed of an ending succession of numbers. Sequence. It's never ending. Or, there are some cases wherein the sequence is finite, but most uh, commonly, or usually, there is no end for the succession of numbers. So, examples of sequences are this one, a series of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to positive infinity, 2, 4, 6, 8, up to positive infinity, 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, up to positive infinity. So, if you will notice, each of the terms in the sequence, we call these terms, ang tawag natin sa each element of this sequence is terms. Okay. So, tawag natin sa placeholder niya or the order or the position of that specific term is term number. Okay? So, dito, same yung term number tsaka yung terms. So, let's take a look at this second example. 2, 4, 6, 8. So, if you will notice, pag sinabing sequence, we are always following a certain pattern. In this case, we are increasing it by 2. In the first example, we are increasing the number by 1. In the third example, we are increasing the denominator by 1 because yung 1 here can also be written as 1 over 1. Right? So, nag increase yung denominator by one. So, pag sinabing sequence, there is always a pattern in, how, in finding the succeeding numbers. And, we call each of these elements the terms. And the term number is what we call your, the value in that specific position. Okay, so, in the second example, if I ask you what is the fourth term, and of course, you will count from the first term, so 1, 2, 3, 4, the fourth term there is equal to 8. And that 8 is on the fourth order. Or that is the fourth term rather. So continuing, we have your, this one. I've told you, when we are talking about sequences, naturally there will be a pattern. So how do we specify a sequence? We use a formula for the terms. So let's take our first or our second example here, yung 2, 4, 6, 8. We are increasing it by 2. We have here your terms and your term number. So this is also same in saying that the term number is it the term is equal to twice the term number. So, yung term number natin is named as n. This is n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3, n is equal to 4. So, it follows this formula. In bracket notation, this can be written as open bracket 2n close bracket from n is equal to 1 up to positive infinity. So, ibig sabihin, if you are asked to find what is the fifth term, if that is the fifth term, that is, yung term, the term number is 5. So, meaning, to find the term, you just multiply the term number by 2 because that is the formula that is describing the specific sequence. So, the fifth term is equal to 10, so on and so forth. Now, what is a series? A series is the sum of the various numbers or elements of a sequence. Examples would be 
this one from the first example, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. If you add the first five numbers, that would be summing up to 30. And 30 is what you call the se a series. Infinite series is an expression of the form a plus 1, a sub 1, plus a sub 2, plus a sub 3, plus a sub 4, up to a, a sub k, up to infinity. Because that is infinite. When you say infinite, it's never ending. We do not know where, when it will end. Or in sigma notation, summation of a sub k from k is equal to 1 up to positive or positive infinity. So that is your infinite series. Infinite series is an expression. Okay, no written yet. Let S sub n denote the sum of the first n terms of the series. Take note of the word first n terms. Because since that is in a se infinite series, we cannot take the sum of all of the ex all, all of all of the terms. Because that, that would be mathematically impossible. It would take you your lifetime and not even your lifetime to find the sum of a specific infinite series. So what we do, we just take the sum of the first n terms. We specify kung hanggang saan lang yung limit nung kukunin natin na sum. So if s sub 1 is equal to a sub 1 because we are only talking about or we are only taking the sum of the first up to the first term. Pag sinabing s sub 2, we are taking the sum of the infinite series up to the second term and so on and so forth if you are if you say you say s of n we are taking the sum of the infinite series from the first term up to a specified term number in this case that number is is n okay in notation this is equal to summation s of n is equal to summation of a sub k from k is equal to 1 up to positive n. So, kanina, yung infinity natin is for the sum of the infinite series. But now, we are only talking about, we, we place a limit for that specific infinite series. So, S sub n is the n partial sum of the series. The most common use of sums that contain infinite terms is in the decimal representation of the numbers. So what, what does that mean? For example, when we are going to write 1 divided by 3, this fraction in its decimal form is equal to 0 0.3333333. We have a repeating number here. We are repeating 3 up to infinity. So, this is similar to saying that 1 third is equal to 0 0.3 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.003, and so on, and so forth. So in, in this case, this is an example of an infinite series. Special case nga lang siya. Okay? So we can also write this as 3 over 10 plus 3 over 10 squared plus 3 over 10 raised to 3 plus 3 over 10 raised to 4, so on and so forth. Notice that the exponent of the denominator 10 is, is increasing by 1 for us to be able to find the value of 1 over 3. Now that is an example of a power series. If c sub 0, c sub 1, and c sub 2 are cons constants, when you say constants, they are not changing. And x is a variable, then a series of the form Summation of c sub, x, c sub k times x raised to k from k is equal to 0 up to positive infinity is equal to c sub 0 plus c sub 1 times x plus this is c. Sorry, I have to go c sub 2 x raised to 2 up to infinity. So, bakit siya naging c sub 0? Because this is c sub 0. We are starting our k from 0 and x raised to 0. Any number you raise it to 0 will be equal to 1. So, 1 times c sub 0 is equal to 
C sub 0. Okay? Continuing, this is called a power series. Kaya naging power series because there is an exponent. Powers are also called exponents. Power series. Some examples are summation of x raised to k from k raised to 0. k equal to 0 up to positive infinity, 1 plus here, 1 plus x plus x raised to 2 plus x raised to 3 up to positive in, up to and so on and so forth. In this case, in the first example, your c sub 0 is equal to c sub 1 equal to c sub 2 equal to c sub n. So, isa lang yung constant value natin. It's not changing. Another case, we have here another power series. Okay, factorial yung nasa denominator. And another example of a power series. Anything that involves an exponent that is increasing in increment. If a numerical value is substituted for x in a power series, cx, c sub k times x raised to k, then we obtain a series of constants, which makes sense. It, since c sub k is a constant and x is a constant, your k is also a constant that's starting from 0 up to positive infinity, then you will obtain a series of constants. But if x is not a constant, if that is a variable, then you will obtain a series that is having variable in its